Mm. Why is this fucked up? Oh, whoa. Hello. In and out. Adult and stuff. No problem. We're going to be here for a while. Because <clears throat> I put all this together last night, including the bullshit I have today. Along with the shit that I literally got in the last two hours. Hello, sweetheart. If there's anything that I have told you all that I hate, you know what it is. And it is when people are acting like absolute fucking cowards when it comes to shit that they started themselves. And what's worse is that the wrong people have the wrong opinions and are trying to claim things that are obviously not fucking true. And worst of all, it's the people that everybody goes to for information. Carl, what are you talking about? Don't worry, I'm going to show you. However, for that, you need a presser. What has happened today? Did you know I posted a video? Don't worry, this is the video. Very gay. Very gay and very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Jeff, throw the music. So here's a couple questions I have for you. I want you to make sure that you understand them, because I'm laying them out very easily for you, right? When you say the dumb shit that's about to be on the screen, we need you to be very certain about these particular things you're claiming and saying, okay? Address the screen. <clears throat> Number one. This is a bunch of bullshit to justify the harassment of a user who has done nothing but use Sweet Baby Inc.'s entire repertoire and their own listed and flutters games and the companies they work with as a demonstration to show what it is they do. They didn't harass, they didn't dox, they didn't stalk, they didn't attack, they didn't deface, they didn't destroy, they didn't confront anyone to make this. They literally set up a scene curation, and that scene curation lists the games from the companies that they are affiliated and have consulted with. <laughs> so, when you go, then you say, the scene has no guidelines, it has no backgrounds, and then you know the stop you from doing things. You do understand that you are quite literally using fascist Gestapo tactics. Yes, yes. Moving forward from Dublin followers overnight, meaning it's popular, something or not. And we get to see exactly the people who are describing it as a way to avoid inclusivity. Pause. If inclusivity is the future, then shouldn't you see this as an outlier that will immediately be swept away by the dregs of the future? Do you have no confidence, no conviction, no severity, no seriousness in anything that you're doing? Do you believe that the reason people are flocking to it is that if you don't show them the true way, that that means that you're going to lose advantage, view, power, prestige, and some such other bullshit that you believe is supposed to come through for doing this? But the sheer fact of the matter is that there is nothing here. There is not a single thing here that is supposed to show anything to that degree. It's just you seeing that person making a scene curation list on Twitter. It's crazy. Do you have no conviction in your philosophy <laughs> that you're the best way? Very interesting. Very interesting that the, that, the, that, the, that the crazy Nazi tactics are being used by you. Crazy. Furthermore, remember that these people do exist. Who are these people? Please take note of the collection of my skin tone. Who are these people? Y'all motherfuckers, motherfuckers are lucky if you ended. Anyways, and while ignoring it goes a very long way, pussy goes, you know, to affect it and target is the other side that all things happen. No, even sweet baby, just everyone existing that they are angry at for existing. But they're not angry. They just said you're working on something. And if they want to avoid you, that they should avoid those games because you consulted on them. That's not hate. That's apathy. You could say it's annoyance to the point that they're willing to find information and make it publicly accessible for everyone else. But this isn't a detriment to you because if you're confident in the things that you consulted on and you believe in the things that you've made, it shouldn't personally affect you. Truly, it literally shouldn't personally affect you because you should be so confident in the work that you put through that there's no way this could personally attack you and this could personally hurt you and that it could cause you to be upset and fuck with. As it's actually said here by another person, it's not about winning inclusivity. If you want to talk about this, I can explain what people actually did. DMs are open. Just ping me. I don't need DMs. We can chat here. What's this list about? Oh, wonderful. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. So this is going to be live on my YouTube. This is going to be live on my Twitter. I'm going to make sure we post it everywhere it can be seen. And when you don't show up to have this conversation, it's very clear, very open, very optimistic conversation for you to explain what it is you believe, the way you want to tell other people to define exclusivity for you and inclusivity for you. Please do remember that. Keep that same energy. Do not lock your account. Do not block the account. Because if you were to run away from conversation and you were to block the account, it makes us very clear for the reasons why you chose to make this thread. This thread is going to be documented. This thread is going to be archived. And I'll be going over this live on my live stream. This is an excuse that you want to have to claim that somebody is hate and you are love when you're demonstrating actions of a person who 
who's committing to fate. Well, all anybody wants to do is either this person's case, just say, hey, this person made a game. He's the person who's responsible behind the fact avoid these games. If you do not want to be associated with this company who turns good content into great slot, don't buy it. No one's making you use my advice, but don't buy it. Again, we all know the, we all know the real answer. Okay? We all know the real answer. That's why I got you to know it. You guys have problems. You have no convictions. You don't believe what you're doing. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Ah. <sighs> Carl, what was that? I don't understand what's going on. I didn't pay attention. We're going to go through it. This is Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. It is an account that is being ran by a person whose entire original point is just to say, Hey, did you know that they made this game? Did you know that they helped like mention in this game? Did you know that they helped make this game possible and that they consulted on it? Etc, 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 etc. All of these are games that they have just publicly listed on their own website. Nobody harassed them for this information. Nobody doxed them for this information. Nobody attacked them for this information. All of this information came directly, specifically from the Sweet Baby Inc. website. Why is that important? For the same reason I made sure to put the original tweet inside the comment section. This, Felix at Home, Lego Butts, if you know nothing about Gamergate, is a part of a cabal of particular people who have found themselves in higher education, learning, entertainment, creativity, and now consulting, specifically for the purposes of harassing, attacking, stalking, and defenestrating people on the internet. This is them, along with another particular user who's been caught doing the same thing, calling for a harassment campaign against this particular user and his accounts. We're going to read the thread in full, because it's very important that you see it and hear it from me with your own goddamn eyes. Nothing has been altered. Nothing has been removed. Everything has been archived. You can find said archive on my original tweet down here, along with the other harassment point that was documented by, I, by, um, excuse me, Loping Pandas and Nvidias, who has several different accounts. No one's lying. No one's hidden anything. No one's harassed anything. This individual's been given opportunity and chances to address any problem, and they are actively running away from things because they do not want to face things publicly, and they have demonstrated so by the way in which they've chosen to behave. Now we shall read it. Beep. I get to see a lot of tweets somehow blaming diversity as the reason for jail, for layoffs, genuinely, as though the economy was going really great and capitalism simply worked before Miles Morales or Spider-Man. They also don't recognize Miles Morales as Spider-Man, because most people don't recognize Miles Morales as Spider-Man because they don't know who Miles Morales is as a character. Uh, every single time this shit comes up, they always say this shit as a cap point, as though, don't you know? <laughs> Don't, don't you know? Don't you know that the people, the people who are against us, they don't recognize a black man as a hero? They're hateful, bigot, Nazi firebrands. Because a firebrand is when people don't care for a character. Because they don't feel the character's earned the position that they're being put in. Because making a video game that is a copy of the same other three video games with the exact same play style is not entertaining, nor it is a very entertaining narrative point to the story. This is a cap, by the way. Just gonna go over it, because this is the same shit they do most of the time, by the way. Who's they? Individuals like this. The weirdest part is when I see these takes from developers or people who have dead bios, uh, it at least seems wild that a dev would see thousands of layoffs and blame not only industry giants but instead a 15 person narrative company founded by a black woman. Um, well, let's start here. Let's start at the part that's important. Uh, and this part, th this, this is the insidious part. This is the insidious part, okay? The weirdest part is when I see these takes from developers or people who have dev bios, at least, I don't know, it seems wild that a dev would see thousands of layoffs and blame not the industry giants, but instead a 15-person narrative company founded by a black woman. By the way, let's go see who's involved in that thing, because you know, they're a part of Sweet Baby Inc., and Sweet Baby Inc.'s shit is listed publicly, let's go look at who's involved in them. Founded in 2018, uh-huh, 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 the project's almost all been wiped. Except the majority of them, because they're showing up late, because you need to work on your goddamn website. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
You're working on projects, talking about character arc, voice, sensitivity reading, writing and character voice, narrative direction design, world building design, full narrative development, story and script, story consultation, narrative character consultation. Who are the clients in said industry? Hmm, very weird. Let's go a little bit wider because people need to see the entirety of this. So right there on the screen, we have Xbox Game Studios, Electronic Arts, Valve, Tree Love, Santa Monica, 2K, Ubisoft, Square Enix, Warner Brothers, Fiji, Polytron, Rock City, Co-op, don't recognize that one, Compulsion Games, don't recognize that one, Change Industry, Avalanche Studios Group, Deck Nine, Brass Lions, Wizards of the Coast, Urinal, People Can Fly, Echo, Juvie, Glitch, Remedy, P don't recognize that one, Raw Fury, and Fellow Traveler. Hmm, it's very interesting. You know, it's weird if you involve yourself with these companies and you make things for them and you get involved in their products, but when things fail and you're directly tied to them, the same way that Aeneas Sarkeesian was tied to things like Anthem, both Dishonored and specifically Dishonored 2, as well as a bunch of other fucking games, and then they crash. If they consult on them and then led to the writing and to the encouragement of the development that led to its failure, like that of Kill the Justice League Suicide Squad, it's really weird when you blame the industry giants and not the motherfuckers who helped them cook the goddamn shit. It's weird. It's weird. Motherfucker, I'm in the kitchen putting all these ingredients in the pot. Oh no, what I cooked is garbage. Why are you blaming me, the shoe chef, when you should be blaming the restaurant owner? The restaurant owner's name's on it, bro. All we did was cook in the kitchen. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Crazy. Going back to that coat. <sighs> These people think a company of narrative designers that freelances on projects somehow single handedly cause the employment collapse in games instead of, you know, the insane notion of infinite growth or capitalist greed. It's easier to blame diversity than somehow, than that somehow. See, this, here's the second cope. Here's the second cope. It's even worse than the first cope. This cope here is even worse. Because what did they just claim? We, Sweet Baby, who helped work with the industry giant, aren't at fault for the industry crashing, despite us directly telling them what should be for, done for a modern audience. And when those games fail, it's not our fault, it's their fault. So what they should do is they should not employ you anymore, right? Because look, us, all 15 people employed by a black woman aren't responsible. The industry is responsible. Because, you know, capitalist greed and infinite growth. <coughs> Except the growth has been infinite. No one has said that the growth has been infinite. Not even during COVID could you make this application this take. This is a fucking lie. This is just flat out a lie. Either because they don't understand the games industry, because they don't, because they're fucking consultation writers. Or they actively know that they need to try and find a way to justify the harassment they're about to do later on in the thread. There is no justification for what's happening here. There is no logic for what is happening here. It is literally just, I want to harass people. I can't stand the fact that people now know what we're doing. I brought attention to myself. I don't even understand what Streisand effect is. Because when you really get down to brass tacks, if you say this, you have to now make, you now have to square that fucking circle. And unfortunately, they do not square the fucking circle. They do not even try to square the fucking circle. Because here's the logic of this, right? Let's take a good example. Let's go to a game that's on this list. Let's go look. Alan Wake, Spider-Man 2, there's a lot more than this. I don't know why this is the only one that's missing. I want a full list of the projects. So, just to make the example I'm about to state, because I'm waiting for it to come up, because I want to see Saints Row on this list, because I know Saints Row's here, because it's there on the list, you see. One second. The ultimate problem that comes with this take is that this take does not fucking work when you actually think about this shit on the top end of your perspective and on the top end of your understanding.
For some reason, it's not here, but it's okay. I can use the Cure Leader list. Boom. Saints Row is on this list, as well as Suicide Squad. So, you helped with the script writing process, as well as being involved in the company products in the company credits. We should be able to click on this. But yes, they are mentioned there in the company credits. By your logic, when Suicide Squad fails, and when Saints Row failed, the same way I can make the exact same point about Forspoken when it fails, because you are also in the company credits. But you probably aren't completely responsible for it, but somebody has to be, because somebody told them that they should do this. When these games fail, and then their studios get shuttered and absorbed, who is responsible? In your mind, just like with Gotham Knights, you're going to point your fingers and say, no, it's the industry giant fault. But the question is, who told them that what they should do is what they chose to go for? Because as much as we can put that on the head of Volition, who was speaking the poison in their ear for them to do it? Because if you're going to take credit for the thing that you're involved with, it has to be somebody. You can't put it all at their feet because you're not innocent. You're involved in it. How do we know you're involved in it? Because you're dedicating enough energy to harass a guy where all they do is go through your credits on your website. So you start delisting your credits on your website to try to avoid criticism. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The argument doesn't make sense because someone's going to be blamed. Someone's going to lose their job and someone's going to be fired over it because of all these clients that you brag about having. There's no way there's not somebody talking down the line. We've already seen the fucking tweets and we've already seen the harassment from Convulsion Games saying that they want to have the ability to rewrite history. And for all the people who get involved in these companies and these products, if they make statements like this, just like you all have made statements here, they will be documented too. So, who the fuck is telling them to destroy their companies off your suggestions? There needs to be logic behind it. This statement has no logic behind it. There is no follow through. As you should have been told in writing, there is no ontological inertia. There is no foundation upon which this sets for which this makes sense. And when I try to push on this barrier to try and see if this can hold weight, whether it consistently follows through with logic, it falls under the weight of the pressure. So where exactly, how exactly does this statement make fucking sense? Make it make sense. It's fucking gay. Absolutely fucking gay. <clears throat> I still think it's way more likely that they know that it's not the case and are just fine with looking stupid as long as it justifies them being loudly anti-woke or whatever that means. Realistically, in this case, if we're talking about what anti-woke means, it means not inserting what you state your approach and your view is. We begin with an all-hands review and discussion of material product. Everybody at the product sees and shares their thoughts, feelings, and ideas. We do it because it kicks off the project with perspectives. Beginning a conversation ensures the work is richer and more resonant, with, even when put to paper. We then complete narrative deliveries by keeping the player in mind. We focus on user experience and emotional design. We aim to consult with honesty, transparency, and a controversial approach to help find the best direction for your project. Services. We bring diverse voices to solve diverse problems. So we begin provides a narrative consultation at any stage of development, boasting a team of diverse talent with vetted industry experiences to best bring your story to life. Narrative writing, writing in general, representation, which representation literally just means insert a character inside of it and change them. And then the development process, which means the coding in the back end. Going right back to the point that I just made. If you're doing all this shit and you're doing all these things, when aren't you culpable? If you put your fingers in the pot and you have something that gets canceled and gets broken and gets absorbed and gets revoked and has the funding pulled and they get shuttered, when aren't you culpable? Because anybody else involved in that, like Volition, saying they're the ones who published that same throw reboot, they're culpable. They got absorbed. But you keep moving scot-free. It's like a virus, you see. You infect them with your bullshit. They get shuttered, but you say, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. You guys just want to look stupid and be anti-woke. 
Me, I'm anti-destroying games. I'm anti-delivering bad products. It is, in my opinion, and in my best critique that you do nothing but create bad product. How do we know? The games which you have listed as projects are not great. This is a AAA game that pushes a narrative that does not need to exist the way that it does for no other reason than because somebody decided, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to take the character of Kratos and we're going to completely change and flip it without having the purpose to because we really, really, really wanted to use Hollywood actors and mocap. Alan Wake, same shit. This, I don't even have to look at this and play this to know that it's being done with a diverse mindset in mind because female protagonist. That sounds like a cap, but it's not. Ever since the industry started pushing for female protagonists, a lot of companies use it as a stand-in for actually having diversity because they believe that people needed to have a female protagonist in order for them to connect to them, which is obviously bullshit because people want to connect to a character. They don't need to just connect to a straight, white, white-haired, blue-haired, red-haired male gamer or male perspective or male protagonist or even voiceless nameless protagonists. They just want a good character to attach themselves to and a good narrative to do that in. Most of these games, with the, with the exception of Goodbye Volcano High, are just basically literally who products. For the purposes of having good story narrative and diversity development. In the case of Good Vol in Goodbye Volcano High, this was literally the game that has had two games released before it was released. You can't get around the accusations of Justice League. You literally can't get around the accusations of Justice League. Can't get around the accusations of Spider-Man 2, because Insomniac Spider-Man 1, Miles Morales, and Spider-Man 2 are literally the same fucking game that pushes a character over the top for the reason of trying to make Peter Parker look like he's a fucking idiot. All the time. And debasing him in his own title. Because we are Spider-Man. But you know, you should step down, Peter. <laughs> the city will be safe in my black hands. <laughs> and then the rest of this, same shit. Ultimately, in your viewpoint, by your opinion, by your understanding, especially when we're talking about you saying that you worked on the full game development, Lost Your Marbles is probably the best case example of what it looks like when people describe what they call woke. It's right there. All of it's right there. What does that mean? Can you explain, Carl? I can. You have characters that are diverse for the purposes of being diverse. Add characters because they're there. Goofy, Tumblr-esque style, completely contrarian, silly, wacky, queered, queered as in taking something, making it almost literally just camp. Some people would say, "Well, that's just fun," and I don't, I don't have a, I don't have an opinion against it. But if I had to take the image of woke and give it a visual definition, I would take that screen cap and put it in the definition. If I wanted to do another thing with that, I'd do the exact same thing with just, or as I called it, just. Take Suicide Squad, put it right there. Same thing. Volcano High, take the screen cap, put it right there. Same thing. It's not hard to define these things. It's not hard to explain these things. You guys just really don't like it when people have those basic answers. It's wild that you guys get like that, but it's okay. That's all right. We understand that you're upset. Because you then said, we all know what it means. No, most people don't know what <coughs> woke means. Because woke is a collective catch-all term. Realistically, it should be what it is. Dogmatic cathedralites. You push and you festoon a narrative of specifically intrinsically anti-male, anti-representation, anti-inclusion, and anti-diversity, masquerading as diversity, equity, inclusion, and acceptance, or representation. That's DEI in a nutshell. The things that we've already had, you take those things, you break them apart and you remix them, and you produce a Frankensteinian monster that you call DEI. And you do it specifically because you hate the people that you believe games are being portrayed towards, which is white males. Ooh, woo, thank you for the tip. Thank you, Alicia, for that six dollars. 
The agenda matters more than the entertainment. I agree. Thank you. I was about to say that, Foxwood. The agenda that you push for your ideas matter more to you than the entertainment value. The agenda matters more than the entertainment value. That is why Suicide Squad is a failure. It mattered more to shit on the concept of these characters. Granted, nobody knew that was going to be Kevin Conroy's last performance. But you want to shit on the idea of the characters, regardless of the running theory that in that game, the Justice League isn't actually dead, they're fighting clones. But regardless of whatever fucking standard, the sheer optics here, because most of you care about optics more than you actually care about entertainment, the sheer optics of guns of Batman's head and executing him, and then the non-stop ranting in the background and happening all the time on Twitter of Batman's just a horrible fascist with straight with strenuous issues who doesn't actually care about people and wants to beat the shit out of them. He doesn't use his money for anything. He just cripples people and gets off on it. <sighs> Despite the amount of times that Bruce Wayne has actively swayed people from doing crimes by literally just paying them better than any of the rogues gallery could. Offering jobs, offering housing, offering a better life, and all they gotta do is put the gun down. No matter all the narratives there, it makes no fucking sense why you would think you could write something like that and then pretend actually they just hate it because it's fucking anti-woke. They, they don't even know what woke is, but we know what it is. Same thing applies to Spider-Man 2. Why is it somehow, randomly, despite the fact that Peter had no involvement with the Venom symbiote, that the moment he gets the Venom Studio, he starts acting like Bully Maguire. And then immediately afterwards, is Mia coping himself everywhere, all the time, for no other reason than because they just do so and feel like it. Narrative points meant to make him feel embarrassed to even exist. The entire narrative of the screen fight being nothing but MJ dumping on him emotionally. Somehow, a concept that has always been there. Symbio, weak to fire, is outright changed. Because, you know, it just made for a better in, in, in that moment to see Venom rising against the fire. The literal catch-all bioelectricity use of Miles' abilities somehow being better than the basic Spider-Man abilities. The idea that in the middle of this story that there needs to be an Adidas tie-in to make him look stupid with the goofy-ass King Kelmonger dreads. Because you guys don't know what diversity really is because you guys certainly don't have diversity of hairstyle. And other such bullshit. Other such examples in the narrative. These things matter to you more than actually making a good comparable game. And the fact that you're tied to these things and are being given awards for these things amongst a field of work where the games journalists already hate and have tried to kill the consumers that keep them employed. It's wild that you can even assert anything close to what you're saying. And also, at the same time, you guys are so fucking scared. This, this had to be said because most people have noticed this. If you already noticed this before, you should be paying attention to it. You guys are so scared of this attention that you're locking your corporate account because you don't want people looking into you. All this pride, all this enjoyment, all this confidence in your work, the second the spotlight's on you, running for the fucking hills. Not to mention, again, what you're going to do later in this thread. The other part is this doesn't matter if you tell them the truth. They think DEI just steps in and changes the whole game so the creators are forced by some unseen hand. The government. BlackRock. By the way, great use of fucking open brackets. It's just so, so cool. So cool that you're dumb at doing that. Anyways. I guess just as well people of color in general to make games more inclusive. Um, if an industry is being told by the concept of ESG... into ESG investing and the framework changing the investment landscape. Environmental, social, and group governance set of considerations, including environmental issues, social issues, corporate governance, that is considered an investment. Let's use Square Enix. Set 
Let's send them our recent example. <clears throat> Environmental Social and Governance, directly from the HC Square Enix English Library from 2020 of their governance PDF. Through social and environmental initiatives, the group works hard to bolster our corporate values while sus creating sustainable growth. As a part of our social responsible initiatives, we labor the consumer and games that our cell groups in such regions as Japan, North America, and Europe with aid, suitability, and other information as dictated by the rating system of the applicable countries. For the mobile games we provide in Japan, we comply with the operating guidelines of random write up and distribution of games established by the Computer G like Entertainment Supplier Association, CISA, and indicate the odds associated with all game items which users play, blah, 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 blah. In the fiscal year that ended in March 2018, we asked ourselves, what would it be like if there was a Department of Games at the Tokyo University of the Arts? To answer that question, we created such a department for a limited time with the help of the Grad with School of Film and New Media, which is the University Center of Innovation, the COI, in the fiscal year ended in March 19. We held an exhibition called Tokyo University of the Arts, Department of Games, Verbal Slice, that showcases works produced by AGG Project Group, an endeavor aided by creators of our investment group, Luminous, Ga like Luminous Games uh, Company uh, Limited. Initiative paved the way for the creation of the fiscal year in 2020 of the games course at the Graduate School of Films and New Media of Tokyo University of the Arts, enabling us to continue collaboration with the university and its efforts to expand the potential of games, which is used for arts and field of filmmaking expressions, where Enix will remain actively engaged by providing instruction, blah, 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 blah. Like inserted work, inserted work, inserted work, inserted work, it's in the work, forces for it. COVID-19, COVID-19 works, human resource initiatives, human resource training. Ah, uh, let's see here. Wonderful. New employee onboarding. Game dev boot camp. New employees divided into teams. Experience in game development. Starts with planning. Continues all the way through to launch. Acquiring basic job skills and application of the importance. Working collaboratively with teams firsthand. In addition, inquiring groups to tackle challenges without fear of failure. Blah, 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 blah. Compliance training. Global resources training. You can literally read this at any time you want to. The PDF is there. I'll drop the link into the chat right here, chat. Beep. Bop. See a little bit is off the screen. Go to a different window. Beep. Ba -ba -da -ba. Beep. Again, you can lead it any time. The link is right there. It's also right there in the chat. Working style diversification. Parenting programs. How these things work together. Corporate governance. The company is a peer holding company governing Square Enix Group was Develops a wide range of content services. The company believes it's essential for the achievement of the group's continuous growth and maximization of its corporate values. With the medium long term, to respect the interests of the company's stakeholders and the shareholders and customers, business partners, employees, and society, and maintain the good of relationships. Let them under an agile, transparent, and sound management. As such, the company recognizes the enrichment and advancements of the corporate governance is a key to management challenge, and the entire group devotes itself to that end as an ongoing basis. With the overview of corporate government systems and their objectives, which you can read. In full, I can't even highlight this. There we go. In full, in full. Now, see, when you say something stupid, kind of like, oh, I don't know, the idea just steps in and can change whole games. It's not that it steps in and changes whole games overnight. That's never been how the process works. The process works by saying, we have an investment goal to our stakeholders to do a job, and we're going to do these things in the investment of our stakeholders. Now, if you know anything about this in this recent news, especially if stupid loudmouths that know nothing about how to report the news said, look, look, bros, we're finally winning, before they pulled a day one patch on your ass and fucking, hey, and fucking bamboozled the bitch ass. Square Enix reportedly deleted the ESG off the website. As you can clearly see here, they did not. They simply removed it from the front page. They are doing what we call a reorganization. We will have yet to see if they will commit to these things. But it is in my opinion that they are very much giving you a bait and switch bamboozle. As many of you should have realized when Final Fantasy XVII Rebirth launched. So, as we read directly from the text of the document, when you say people just believe that it steps in and does these things, that's not how it works. What's done is that people like you agitate over and over and over again that they need to be making things for a modern audience so they can provoke the message. And the message is we do things for the investment purposes of our social governance and for our general economic viability. 
Now, you could say that's capitalism, but realistically, the majority of you are communists, so... Kind of big capitalist, if you ask me. Excuse me, had to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> Fighting misinformation would be great, but social media plus YouTube is not equipped to hold people accountable to doing real research in good faith. That is a lie. Social media is most definitely capable and equipped to hold people accountable. I will demonstrate. There's this website called archive.today. We click a link and we click a button and we put that thing in there and we document things and then we ask questions and we talk about them. This is very useful, for example, in the case that, oh, you know, a company like yours decides to hide itself. What we simply do is we go here and we go to Twitter and then we go to a safe snapshot and we put an asterisk there in the back corner. And then we say search and ah oh man, it allows us to do this thing called archiving your website. Very crazy, it's very weird, very open, very sus, etc, etc. If I put an asterisk like this, plus wait, oh actually it doesn't have any because apparently nobody else archived any other than myself. But let's use my account as an example. Which is pretty fucking easy if you don't if you really know what the fuck you're doing. You go here, you put in my account name, you also put in an asterisk, and you search and oh boy, look at that. Archives of things. Some of these which I've made myself, some which people have taken out of my account. It's it's really easy to hold people responsible. It's it's really fucking easy to hold people responsible. I understand that you guys are upset. And that you think that people don't know about these tools, but these tools exist. Everybody knows how to archive. The good people know how to archive and how to do it correctly so they can't hide shit. But no, the internet is equipped for it. YouTube is capable of it. Thank you for the $5, Foxwood. People are capable for it. It's not hard to do. You guys just don't like that people who are doing it are the people who are against you. That's what it is. And good faith... Investigating your takes is when people are doing things in good faith. Showing examples of what they're talking about and giving examples to put things in perspective for people. Instead of just saying, attack him, attack him, attack him, they're against the boobies. That is what you think is bad faith. Cap, cope, cap and cope. <coughs> also, getting hits and proving your point in the absence of confirmation. It's wild out there. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Also, it's already on screen, but we haven't gotten there. Don't, don't, don't bust that nut yet! Don't bust that nut yet! Sorry, no, one thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation just to let them be racist in public with no consequences has increased dramatically. That has changed. Probably requires some fighting from those with authority, probably, and then just literally cancel culture. Which, it's not cancel culture, it's called persecution. Literally just persecution. Literally Gestapo curse persecution. Because, ah, man, I don't have power, so I'm gonna go invoke some. That's what this is right here. For example, Steam doesn't have guidelines for creators, as far as I can tell, that would prevent someone from starting a curation group, because that focuses on, for example, our company. Very interesting and weird how Sweet Baby Inc. is not tagged here. Almost like you to remove the tag itself. Interesting. Cool, 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 cool. And warns people not to buy games they're associated with. Which should just be any game at all. Well, as you can clearly see, it's called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. 
the group that I have right here. And each of these, as you can see with the mention right here, each of these games have been listed in the other company section or in the company credits or directly listed on their website as being involved in the game's content creation and in its creativity, period. It's um, not hard at all to list these things. They come directly from your own IMDb. They come directly from your own website. It is posted in your groups, on your places, and on your websites. You cannot get upset about that. That is literally people doing this thing called using the official game credits. The thing which is necessary for you to receive those rewards that you guys want to brag about. And that collegiate proof that you want to brag about. And for that polygree, excuse me, pedigree you want to brag about and have involved to your company. Truly, holding people accountable is when you hold them accountable and then you get mad that they're held accountable. So true, chat. So true. Which, listen, I'm not sure who uses creator lists. I use creator lists. Everyone on Steam uses creator lists. Most people, they just go by word of mouth, but some people, they have particular tastes and they want to go down to creator lists because it gives them the ability to look for a particular thing that they're into. In my guess, it's people who would never ever buy the games any of us work on, except they do, and they don't list those particular games here either. So what are those games? Can you name them? Are you going to name them? I bet you won't. <clears throat> but there's nothing here preventing this, even though they clearly not what creators are for. No, creators are for, for them doing whatever they want with them, if it's just literally listing games. In this case, it is a list of things that if you do not want to help, and you do not want to increase the prestige, and you do not want to buy Sweet Baby Meat games... You can literally just follow it, and it's like, oh, this is on the list? No problem, I'm not gonna buy it. Oh, what's that? The game's on the list, and I own it? Well, let me go ahead and refund it. That's all that list is for. That's all it has to be for. I understand you're upset, but you're gonna have to get the fuck over it. It's doubled in followers overnight. Hey, here's an idea. If you don't like something being popular, maybe don't put it directly to your friend, dumbass! <laughs> Anyways... Doubling followers overnight, and we get to see exactly what people are describing it as a way to avoid inclusivity. No, they're using it as a way to avoid you. If you are saying what you're doing is inclusivity, then they're using it as a way to avoid you. Specifically you. Specifically you in your mindset. And there's no one challenging them. Aw, oh, man, that must be terrifying for you. People not challenging your viewpoints. People not going through your shit. A mouth. I'm out. I'm out. Michael Fiudona went through when he was pissing. How get to reading it? In a second. Where's my cursor? My cursor dispute. Where's my cursor? God, I hate when he's giving me this bug. This is extremely hard to actually be able to open. There we go. It's extremely be hard to try and be able to open this like, tab on the side if I can't actually look at the thing that I'm trying to look at. Cough, cough. Officia's message for you. Lurkin, which is earlier on February 5th. I didn't get to read this one. Love the game streams. Listen to while working game. And then Nyx, donating so this gets seen. Remember the names that are involved with this? Everybody should know that. Like, I said that in the early part of the beginning of this. Every single person who's involved in this particular harassment campaign is directly involved with Silver String uh, Entertainment. There are people who are directly at the center of Gubrier. They are directly involved in Gamergate. Lego Butts especially. But we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet, chat. <sighs> this isn't a complaint, it's just a fact. And I can't stay quiet about it, nor should I have to. And if people don't want to work with you and play your games, they also don't have to remain quiet about it either. They can say, I don't want to be associated with you, and I don't want you to buy your shit. Really gotta charge my phone. Anyways, remember that these people do exist, and while ignoring it goes a very long way, but you didn't do that, now did you? Boosting it, 
boosting those you know are affected and targeted is the other side of it also needs to happen not even sweet baby just everyone existing that they are angry at for existing if you know you know but they're not racists look at my complexion chat do i look like a bigot look 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 at me chat look at me chat look at me chat do i look like a manazi Do I look like I'm a Nazi? I colonize my white wife every other night. I'm doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <clears throat> Anyways. It's pretty funny to see a note on my stream curator post. I guess they need to defend themselves because they're completely wrong about everything Sweet Baby or any narrative team does and have no interest in finding out. So, why don't you tell us then, instead of coping? Uh, uh, uh. But now, let's move to the other post in question. Kiss, Kid, wait, excuse me, Chris Kindred. The Steam User Harassment Group Sweet Baby Inc. detected is led, is led by this person, Caparitus Rambo, going out of their way to not only find this person, but to harass this person. Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language filed off, this group itself still fails the code of conduct. Anyway, report the fuck out of this group, and report the creator since he loves his account so much. This is targeted harassment. Pure as. Now let's just go ahead and look into who Chris Kindred is real quick. Mm, go ahead and just... Chris Kindred... No, oh, it's Kindred. Oh boy, would you look at that. Oh boy, would you look at that. Oh boy, would you look at that. Oh. It's like baby back ribs. We harass people and then we hide like cockroaches. Crazy. 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 So, these particular people, by the way, <laughs> just, 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 to, just to rub it on in, because it should be here, assuming that other people have done their job so that I can do mine. So they did archive that. This is from March 2021, April 2022, March 2024. <coughs> Narrative designer, Sweet Baby Inc. New school. Bunch of innocuous posts. Very weird how they didn't feel a need to private up until now. Very weird. Very, very weird. And let's see if we can find anything else here. Oh, oh man, look at that. 60 URLs. Oh, oh man, what that 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 thing, that thing. Oh, oh man, let's let's just go ahead and take in this sports board chat. Oh, so many good examples of what it looks like when people are actually holding them accountable for doing their job as individual news journalists. And who said there's no way to hold people accountable on the internet? <laughs> uh, uh. Anyways. Let's go from the t let's go from the top down, shall we? Let's go from the top down. <clears throat> you asked what is it look like when people are doing fake gay bullshit. I'll show you some examples. 
White queers aren't doing the work of decoupling whiteness from queerness. Universalizing white queer, hashtag TM traits narc, experiences that everyone does so alienates non-white people in your spaces. Like, sorry, I don't relate to Sock. Actually, I got my own queer touchstones and signifiers. Uh, dumbass. Remember when you said, uh, what does it look like when people are being woke? Right there. Right there. Right there. What else do we have here? Non-black folks. So we know they're one of those. You can't afford to turn away from this when it gets hard. There's no end to the work you can do towards liberation. You will never be done educating. Never be done donating. Never be done organizing. To believe so is arrogant and at worst and naive at best. All right, you know the fives. Time for Juneteenth donation. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <coughs> uh, uh, Go ahead with a soundboard real quick. <laughs> Who the fuck let this kid in the kitchen? Do not let him cook again. Oh! <laughs> oh, so garbage. Man said, I ain't do nothing valuable for purpose. Give me money. Oh, man, what a, what a wonderful viewpoint. What a, what a wonderful viewpoint. Truly, what a wonderful viewpoint. Oh. And, of course, the documentation of the, of the harassment threat itself. Taken at, both, like, at multiple points in time. Specifically between yesterday and today. Another one taken again with them directly harassing the person and trying to find the shit. Other parts coming from the thread itself. <laughs> Chris Crindred harassing somebody on said thread saying, quote, do you, do you have anything else to be doing with your time? I don't know, Chris. I don't know, Chris. I don't know, Chris. I can say the same thing to you and Lego. Do you have nothing better to be doing with yours? Huh? Also, let me just go ahead and add all these archives of the shit you two have said directly to my main thread. Let me just go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Let's go ahead and uh, get that out the way. How is this person's name listed? Lego butts. <coughs> Gotta make sure to open bracket close brackets to make sure they do it right. Pain. All right, doing my job. Let's continue. Uh -huh. Working in and around AAA is fun because there's people dedicated to making right-wing conspiracies about your job, and that's normal. It's great being a person who witnesses my fucking uh, field of work get harassed on a regular case basis because there's a bunch of fucking people that cannot do anything at all. But boy, do they pretend. Uh. Here's another one. 
Take this guy, for example. No life. Doesn't know how games are made. Probably musty. Dedicates an inordinate amount of time posting to an audience of nobody about us. Brace yourself for this guy. It might not be him, but it'll be close. By the way, African-American content creator. African-American content creator. Harassing somebody else. Granted, we shouldn't call Chris Kendrick a content creator, but we have to for the sake of the point. Is that the diversity that we're looking for? Is that the diversity, equity, and inclusion that we want? Is, is that what we do here? Is that what we do here? It sounds like that's what we do here. <laughs> what else do we have? I've seen folks ask why I've aimed wards should have anything about Gaza. It's about legitimacy. A huge cultural institution backed with money and power saying it's a real thing that's happening. We should demand safety and dignity for Palestinians. By the way, when they say things like the river to the sea, keep in mind that they are specifically talking about the death of Israelites and Jewish people. And they are incapable of actually addressing this problem on either side of the issue. By all means, please look into what they were saying on October 8th. Then, of course, they've got a bunch of posts about things about comics. More wackadilly things about comics. Oh, here's a here's a lovely one that just shows you their mindset, and wonderfully enough, it's before they change the way that archives work. So it's showing the entire archive of the page instead of just showing a singular treat that has to be thread unrolled and then archived itself. Two reasons why the NFT discourse gets me heated. One, the environmental impacts will not affect these people. They will disproportionately affect black and brown areas. No longer are we even calling them people. We're now calling them entire areas. The area of your screen that is currently occupied by Carl is an entire brown and black area. Everything I'm doing right now, chat. Everything, all this. I'm an entirely affected black area. <laughs> Please, you have to give me money, chat. Please, you have to give me money. The affected black area on the screen cannot exist without it. Do it for justice and also for the for 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 the diaspora. Uhuru, or you're a Nazi. <laughs> oh. If I didn't put it in front of your face and if I didn't show you, you'd think I was fucking lying. That's the worst part. Oh. Anyways. Now that we've covered the people, let us now get into the takes. Because boy, are these takes dog shit. Boop. Bring this up. Now. We shall go into the takes of Asmongold. The takes which are dog shit. As you will clearly see on the screen in front of you. This is actually like a really kind of a big story. Uh, that's, I mean, at least I don't know what you say real big story. Like, I mean, this is my opinion of like what a big story is. But, um, this is So, Sweet Baby uh, Incorporated, this is the, in my opinion, I think that water, I know, yeah. Well, I've said, I've said before, right? If I'm ever drinking water, you know I'm down bad. I got maybe two hours of sleep, okay? So yes. Anyway, let's get back over to this. Sweet Baby Employee. So Sweet Baby Incorporated. This is the, uh, let me see if I can, can I, can I find this to the Twitter page here? Yeah, uh, let me see if I can find it. So working at Sweet Baby Incorporated, this is a, basically, in my opinion, and this might be a very unpopular opinion, but I feel like this company is being used as a boogeyman. And it's kind of hard to be a boogeyman when they are quite literally out in the open doing things. As we just read, as I just informed you, the group of Sweet Baby Inc., for the most part, are, by the words of two of their employees, one who confirmed it themselves with their words and their actions, are a bunch of fucking activists. 
They are a bunch of political minded diversity, equity, and inclusion activists who have been active since Goober Day. Specifically, intrinsically, and purposefully waiting for the opportunity to influence the gaming system. Who are trying to use literally some people's ignorance of how video game development actually does work to say that they know nothing about how video game development works or how they would have no involvement in something that they directly had involvement and hands in. That's my opinion. Continue. People view this company, it's kind of like the World Economic Forum on a smaller scale, where like, I don't think the World Economic Forum is, you know, actually the Illuminati in plain sight, and they're not actually trying to like, you know, kill everybody and do all these things. They're kind of like a representation that people can see, and because people see this example of it, then they latch onto it, and they're like, these are the core people that are causing all of our problems. I Pause. That's not how people see it. People see it as an example of how stupid they've been. And how obvious and in their face it was how blatantly right there in their face it was and they didn't see it because they didn't understand how to speak the language that they're speaking that is what it is that's the actual fact that matters now we're a real streamer chat that is the actual factor that actually fucking matters And the reason why is because the entire time that people have tried to get this information across the bow to make sure that people could understand what is actually being discussed, what is actually being understood, and is actually being done from the top to the bottom of the industry, they needed to have someone who was on the mark right there witnessing shit happening in real time and addressing the shit happening in real time they did not have before but have now that access to that information and that access to that mindset they didn't have it before in the past with the group brigade they just didn't and the reason why they didn't these were the reasons that anybody could think. People were so focused on other problems, they didn't have a way to address the reality of what they were dealing with. It is just as obvious it needs to be. It's like not understanding that a Shadow Cabal is responsible for what a Shadow Cabal does. And then when it comes time to address said problem and address said thing, you can't because you don't even have the ability to formulate the words for why you would do so. Boy, do I love when YouTube is just dog shit. There you go. I can click anywhere on the message now. I don't have to just click specifically on the three buttons. Anyways. They didn't have the words to formulate how to deal with the problem. People didn't have the information for it with dealing with Anita Sarkeesian, for example. They didn't know that they weren't dealing with Anita Sarkeesian. It was Anita Sarkeesian puppeting the words of Jonathan McIntosh. But later on in the future, once they got famous frequency up and running at the day and age of the female protagonist, which is about a six-year period, People started learning to recognize how to read the fact that they were cooking the numbers. And now that E3 is dead, much like how people have learned to archive first and talk shit shit second, not to reply to and talk shit first, and then when you have the ability to try and go and archive afterwards, Realize you can't archive anything because you've been blocked or because they deleted the tweet. People have learned how to deal with these problems. The thing that's really shit about this argument 
is that Asmongold understands exactly what this is like. How do I know? There's me right. Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking for it. It's probably not here. It's probably on one of his other reaction channels if it's not specifically here. Because if you know what I'm looking for, you know what I'm looking for. See if I find it this way. Here it is. This argument really doesn't work. Because if that argument was to work, the application of that exact same take would apply to his response to Jamie Marchie attacking him. Because it's the exact same argument. You didn't realize how bad it actually was until people showed you examples of it in real time. Then, when you saw those examples and you started talking about it, you started getting harassment from a group of people for almost Yo. literally, ooh woo, for almost literally no fucking reason. And then, when you responded to it, they then did what, Zachary? Double down harder. So when you say, Sweet Baby Ink is a boogeyman, we, people don't actually know what's going on. They just see them and associate with the problem and say the other people are responsible for it. That's obviously not fucking true and a lie. Because if that were the response, then it would have been exactly like that when Jamie Marchie and the majority of the Funimation dick writers came to harass you and try to cancel you. Granted, your canceling was for saying something really stupid, but, you know, reasons, stuff, things. Hello, Marcus. It's really fucking retarded to hear you guys say this shit. And because you have millions of people who support you, technically, millions of people who hear you say these things. And then repeat those things uncritically. That you think that ever comes close to you actually being right. It is retarded. Retarded. It is absolutely backwards. It is brain cancer. It is uninformed. It is ill-informed. It is representative of a person who doesn't actually understand how deep the problem actually goes. Again, you just saw me read you the tweets. If you need the clips and the examples, you can go find it on the tweet that we made for the video this morning. They're all there. They're in the thread. You can see them for yourself. They are activists whose goal is to change and make companies want to listen to them, not listen to the customers and the consumers and the fiscal bottom line. Because as you read inside the presser for the ESG standard that was, quote, uh, deleted from the website, but was really just removed and placed into another category, they have an entitlement and a responsibility to their fiduciary standards of their shareholders. If the shareholders are not seeing a recuperative cost of money, then these people do not get power. They have power through telling people, if you do what we say, you'll make more money. That would be quite literally capitalism. But in their minds, capitalism is when people do things that they don't like and then put them on the spot for them. Continue, Asmin. I understand. I totally understand Hi, the problem that people have with this, now. but I don't Hello. think that these people are Hi there. the only uh, symptom of that. Uh, now, obviously, I disagree with like what what they're kind of like their their goals. Bish. Yeah. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. Sorry, I disagree with these because I find them to be antithetical to the nature of what art is. Uh, but of course, obviously, art is decided by the artist. I think the issue is whenever people feel. No, art is decided by the artist, but the value of the art is decided by the consumer. And nobody values the fucking work that they do at Sweet Baby Inc. Because every single game that they have been involved in is dog shit for their involvement. The same way that Dishonored 2 was dog shit for Anita's involvement. Andromeda, Mass Effect Andromeda was dog shit for her involvement. Um, <clears throat> Anthem was dog shit for her involvement. There's a fourth one on that list, but it's slipping my fucking mind. And I don't want to go look at my thread to go find out what it was. For every single one of those games that she was involved in, that she chose to advise on. They all were bad enough to the point where they were either making no money, were not continued, or in the case of Dishonored, as a franchise, because of Dishonored 2, actively shelved permanently. A artist whose art leads to a company, like I said earlier, to their company being shuttered and absorbed, is objectively bad art, to the position of financial value. The art 
the art, air quote, that is being made by them is in the narrative discussion, in the narrative exploration and exemplification, and in the worldview perspective of the greater narrative they are making. What does that mean in context? That means, going back to it real quick, that means when you look at the projects that they're tied to, for Alan Wake 2, their story arc, voice, and sensitivity reading is, we want to make a game that's perspective to a modern audience. So we injected our viewpoints about how characters should be voiced, how arcs should be written, and about how all of this should be discussed. Because you see, in a game where there's guns and blood and violence, we need to be sensitive about these subject matters. Splatter is shoot his head, shoot him in the head! Splatter is splatter the blood on the wall! But make sure that when we see the female body fall to the ground, we don't actually see the bullet wound. Because beauty is not to be tarnished. <laughs> when we have characters that have their bodies desectified, this not on Sweet Baby Ink, but specifically on uh, Netherrealm Studios. In the case of Mortal Kombat as a franchise, but most specifically in the more recent entry of Mortal Kombat 1, when we decide to desexify and de male gazeify the female characters, still brutally rip them apart and destroy them and discombobulate and dismember them, but make sure that they're respectable. And we're being sensitive about how they're being presented. You know, for the queered eye. That's what that means. And it's dog shit for doing so. That kind of art is not valuable to people. Now, of course, you're a person who doesn't care about that. You're like, bro, I don't give a fuck about this. I just want to play the game. None of this shit matters to you. And continue to vote with your wallet. But keep in mind, this is what's being decided. And when you vote with your wallet, you are giving them the justification to say, well, nobody really cares, though, because people actually do care. Do the people do care enough? How do we know? Because people cared enough to be able to put it through a list. And we know they care about the people who don't care because they cared enough to try and create a harassment campaign against the guy who made a fucking a curator page that says, hey, yo, they made this game. They were involved in the making of this game. No buy. Feel like they have to do this instead. So anyway, yes, these are an easy target, and uh, these are people that are working at the uh, at the company. And basically, this happened, I think, two days ago. I didn't cover it then because I just didn't really think it was that big of a deal. But now, uh, it, it's definitely worth talking about. What I didn't cover it when it happened because I didn't think it was big enough of a deal for a cloud for me to cover. But now that they're harassing them, and this is how we get here. You know, I could have said something with my big millions of followers, even if it's just for the interest of, hey, yo, what are you guys doing over here? This is fucking weird. Bro, I'm going to talk about this on my live stream. But, you know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But now that they decided to pull the trigger on something even stupider, and also I can cover it on stream, I will definitely talk about it now. And that will definitely not be because it'll get me more clicks on my YouTube channel. <laughs> but Carl, aren't you doing the same thing by covering it right now? Yes, but there's a difference. Asmund Gold doesn't give a shit unless he's given a reason to give a shit. I give a shit simply because I want to see good games. I want good games with worse graphics that run smoothly at 420 FPS with 30 fucking frames a second, and I'm not fucking kidding. I want to be able to play games like Dark Chronicle and Dark Cloud 2 alongside both Nino Kunis and every other game made by Level Up, like by uh, Level 5 Entertainment, see, because I want good games it has nothing to do with the fact that i could increase my ability as a content creator little i should say little to do with it and more to do with the sheer fact that i want more people to know about this shit because if i did not put these things in front of you here if i did not go through the archives here you possibly would have not heard about it until somebody else covered it and even if i didn't cover it either in my stream but i did make tweets about it but nobody credited my tweets, and they did the same thing I did with the localizer tweets, and they tried to remove my name, remove my credits, remove my goddamn handle from everything that I did, and then use it for themselves. I should take credit for the work that I do. Hence why I'm here. He is allowed the exact same thing. But, as you heard, his take is not very good. His mindset is not very good, in my opinion. And you're gonna find more out, that's me, because we're gonna talk about the Hassan take later on. But we're not there yet. Just keep in mind, if you want a base hand opinion about what I feel and what I think about Asmund Gold's opinions, I think he's not a bad content creator. But he really needs to do his goddamn research. And he does not. So when he doesn't do his research, it forces people like me to do the goddamn research for him. But because I'm a smaller content creator, and he is a large YouTuber, make you make YouTuber make big channel. 
is going to get more hits and more clicks, and they're going to take his opinion, and they're not going to criticize it, and they're not going to review it, and they're not going to look into it. And by the time it comes back to someone like me, they're going to say, oh, I heard about all this before, despite not actually reading the tweets, not actually doing the research, not actually looking into the issue, and certainly not pressing the Vogon nerve. I didn't forget Kong and Gollum. They're just not meaningful to mention because they're just obviously bad cash grab games. <laughs> and yes, just some guy is bad, period. I wish games didn't cost 75% of your RAM nowadays and you didn't have to pay $30 for DLC. True! But here's the thing about that. Good old games never stop being good. If you have to emulate them, emulate them. What ended up happening is that there is a Steam, uh, there is a Steam group and there was a person who was looking for any game that used Sweet Baby Incorporated as a consultancy, and they wanted to put that in in like some sort of review. So anybody who who goes into playing this game knows that you know basically the people that made this game uh, like consulted this you know like incorporated <coughs> to try to tone down any sort of things that could be issues. It's basically like a um uh like you know like on, on cigarettes where it says like this will give you. Yes, it's the exact same thing that people have to do in Steam when it comes to using generative AI art. It's the exact same measurements. Lung cancer. It's, it's like a, uh, it's a warning label. It's really simple. And uh, obviously, big surprise, the employees that work at that company are not happy about that. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to look and get somebody who, get all of their followers to come together and uh, basically like, uh, come together and like... Uh, not, not basically. Literally persecute the person. Say it, say it, say it. Hara harass them off the internet. Harass them off the internet. Harass them off the internet. Say it with now. Harass them off the internet. What fuck? Sorry, I got two hours of sleep, so you know it's a bit hard for me. Uh, come together a NAS report. Come together a NAS report and ban the people that are running this different page to silence the people that are trying to hold them. Like, and I, I don't even understand the logic of this either. It's like if people disagree. The logic is how dare you stand against us? That's the logic. They are bullies. That, that they are bullies with what you're doing like isn't that their right to disagree with it i mean if people think yeah i don't want to play no you're not allowed to disagree you're allowed to eat the you are only allowed to eat the goy slop you're not allowed to have an opinion having an opinion makes you a nazi this game because uh, you <clears> know i feel like it doesn't have an authentic sense of art because it's it's not just that they're bullies they're idealistic bullies so it's fervent and constant you mean like nazis mm -hmm. being you know decided by people that aren't even making the content yeah i think so I think that's pretty reasonable and it's also like not that they're calling for harassment or anything else but let's read the post and this is a post written by an employee of sweet baby uh this team curator harassment group sweet baby incorporated detected and so that's where it is is led by this person uh K krampus rambo uh there here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported even with the discriminatory language filed off the group itself still fails uh the the code of conduct so it fails the code of conduct well let, let's go ahead and let's read what what is cited here and see if it actually okay this person clearly made their their tweets private because people disagreed with them um yeah that's what happens this is, this is really what the problem is here is that um you know these people have no problem privating their own narrative they have no problem privating their own twitter whenever uh, they're receiving negative feedback or they're getting criticized or whatever and whenever people aren't okay with their narrative but whenever other people aren't okay sorry with, whenever people disagree with their narrative they immediately put themselves on protected mode and they exercise discretion in what they want to see but they don't offer that same ability for other people if they want to do that through a steam page you understand how this is effectively the same thing like is you're, you're allowing people to censor content and i'm a big advocate of self-censorship I am a big advocate of it. I think that if you don't want to see something, you shouldn't have to see it. So I think that it's very problematic that this person is going to put out an opinion and then protect their account whenever effectively these other people want to protect their account by avoiding other opinions. They're literally doing the same thing, but in a different order with a different sense of, uh, of, of goals. So that's basically what ends up happening. And so anyway, even with the discriminatory language filed off, let's see if we see any discriminatory language. I'm going to see if I can find this real quick and, uh, and go from there. Um, are people like this? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, people are like this because they are constantly told that they have the moral authority to act like belligerent bad people. And once you give people enough moral authority, they become tyrants. And that's just correct. It's proven by all of human history. Like that's basically where I would start is I would say like all of human history and then specifically religion. So yeah, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, anyway, I'll go correct. Go back and I'll see if I can find this page myself. Um, Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can look it up. Because as I said before, guys, I do really like to look these things up myself rather than have somebody else tell me. Okay, so this is a tracker and we've got it right here. So this is it here. Sweet Baby Incorporated, and this is the Steam page right here. It's got already 21,000 followers. So there's clearly a lot of people that feel this way, especially for something that feels so niche. In my opinion, I think it's actually quite niche. But I think it's more representational of the fact that people are tired of having their narratives and stories and video games and also other types of media be um, uh, handicapped and circumcised by people who um, are fucking weird, right? I could have used another, I could have made another joke, but I'll try to be a nice guy today. Uh, but people that they disagree with. Anyway, so we've got a few of these here, and these are the reviews. And if you look at, for example, uh, about, okay, this is about a tracker for games involved with, with Sweet Baby Incorporated. So as we can see here, does anybody see any discriminatory, or sorry, let me make sure that I'm using the word correctly. Uh, yes, even with the discriminatory language filed off, uh, is there any discriminatory language or anything problematic here? Uh, I, I would say that there's definitely not. I think this is an extremely reasonable thing, and if people don't want to watch, like, you know, for example, like Bethesda, like all games that Bethesda made, you don't want to watch it playing those games, like, you're free to make a list of that. Why do these people think that they have the unique authority to remove people from, uh, from collectively deciding not to consume their content? And, and this is really what the problem is here, is that 
it's, it's always, it's not enough for these people to have their own perspective and try to change narratives in their way. But whenever you say, no, I don't want to hear your narrative, then you're harassing them. Then you're attacking them. Then somehow you're breaking the rules. These are people who were hall monitors in fifth grade. They asked the teacher, you forgot to pick up our homework in the ninth grade. Uh, they were trying to, you know, do extra work and like, you know, senior year and making everything more fucking complicated, telling on people in 11th grade for like being on their phone. Like these are professional hall monitors that add, in my opinion, uh, literally no value to anyone or anything. And so, and actually that's not true. Uh, not only do they not add value, but they actively take it away. It's one thing to just do nothing and be useless, but it's another thing to take something that's good and then ruin it, which is what a lot of people are, are accusing them of. Now, I do think that it's a legitimate concern, and it's actually true that Sweet Baby is getting kind of scapegoated in this problem, and I think that they are a symptom and not the disease. This is just a- No. Their entire company is an example of the symptom and the disease. The disease is trying to make things for a modern audience and safety block the entire internet. That's the disease. The disease is censorship and the push for self-censorship, for the self-servicing idea and aggrandization of reaching a larger audience. They claim it's capitalism. I say it's not capitalism. It's specifically trying to reach customers that would never buy your product in the first place. The symptom that this creates is it creates clout chasers and it creates opportunists that see an opportunity to provide for that desire and tell the companies listen to me and i'll give you anything you want listen to me and i'll get you anything you need listen to me and i'll make you more money listen to me and you won't ever have to worry about being accused about hating people listen to me and you never have to lose out another potential fiscal audit or another potential fiscal increase on your portfolio. Listen to me and I'll make sure every time your name is mentioned, you are given accolades on accolades on accolades. Listen to me and I'll make sure you never have to worry about being accused of things you do. And all you have to do is kiss my ring. All you have to do is kiss my ring. Kiss my ring. Kiss my ring. While you're out down there, go ahead and gargle my balls too. That's what it is. People know that's what it is. That's why they behave the way they do. That's why they speak the way they do. They're both the things at once. Now they're just one piece of a greater engine. Because you have people who are like this, not just in consulting agencies, but in the developer agencies themselves. So, going back to the dumbass shit Lego Butts said, you're, you, you're, you're blaming us instead of blaming the developers? No, I blame you and them! Both of them. Both of them. B-O-F-F-U-M. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them are responsible. Both of them are responsible. But if we gotta start somewhere, let's start with you and then work our way towards the industry. Because we know the industry is cancerous. We know that it is. Any of you who are watching the presentation for, like, for uh, Indiana Jones in the Great Circle saw it yourself. It was right there in the presentation. We all saw the gameplay and we're like, wow, it's going to be really good. And then what did we see next? The pride flag. The pride hair. The pride colors. And their ability to try and make things for a modern audience. Book how is that bad? Because they're not focusing on making a good game. They're focusing on making a good game and hiding behind the optics of saying, we're for the good. Also, we punch Nazis. By the way, the Nazis are people who disagree with us. You're not disagreeing with us, are you? Click, click. ...a massive zeitgeist that's happening in media right now anyway. And because they're the ones that people have decided are the ones that are wrong, then, well, now everybody's going to be talking about them. That's it. Yes, they're not the only company for this. And it is definitely, like, kind of overrepresented about that. Why status horrors, man, largely? Yes, I would say pretty much that. And so, anyway, kindly report the fuck out of this group and report the- Have I heard about the shaman tagging Boogie's house? I have not. Please send link on Discord. Creator since he loves his account so much. So it, it's not enough for them to remove the, uh, which by the way, I think they have no justification for doing so, but it's not enough for them. See, it's already gone up by 100 followers literally in the time that I watched it. Uh, it's not enough for them to remove what they think is breaking the terms of service. And this is the problem with these people is that they are vindictive and vengeful. They wield power, not as a shield for, uh, you know, the downtrodden, but as a, as a sword to hurt and attack the people who they think have wronged them. This is not about protecting people, it's about attacking people and protecting them at any means necessary and going even above and beyond by trying to have their account banned. There's no risk of anyone's account being banned if we join in there? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've no clue. Literal censorship, yeah. You're brave for speaking out about these people, dude? We need more people like you? I'm not brave at all. This is just a tweet. Who cares? What do you think? This is some kind of like fucking bravery thing? Bravery is, is, is being a fireman, okay? Like, this isn't brave. I, and also, like, I'm, I'm preaching to the fucking choir here, okay? Everybody agrees with what I'm saying. It's it, like, 
it, like everybody is gonna, everybody's truing this. Everybody thinks that I'm right about this. Like the only people that don't are people like this. Uh, like really, that, that's that's what it is. Yeah, this is a basic fucking take that I think that 90% of people agree with. Yeah, I mean, the, the brave take. I mean, they agree with the beginning of the problem. The problem is, is that the bravery comes from the fact that the, anyone who speaks about this against them would then be targeted next. That's how that works in the minds. That's how it works in the harassment. They target them. I try to say something. They target me, whether or not they're successful or not. My name gets buried inside of the search algorithm. Then when people try to look it up, they're like, who the fuck is single player Carl? I don't worry about them. They're just some Nazi. They're just some, they're just some hateful, they're just an anti, anti-trans bigot. You know, they're just, 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 just some fucking loser. Um, that's a multiracial African American who has descent in Haitian culture. They are Cajun. But they, they are the white of black people. They're the whitest black people we know. Are the ones that everybody fucking hates before, right? That's the difference. Of course, the censorship taint group wants to prevent people from finding out where they're involved, which is kind of ironic because only one or two years ago, companies were proudly announcing that they were working with these companies in order to uh, get special bonus good boy points. And now uh, they want to hide it and actively uh, censor people who were talking about it in the first place. And I think that uh, I think groups like this are great. And I think that whenever these people want to engage in culture war, I think that they should be uh, absolutely expecting for other people on the opposite side to take up arms as well. Uh, this is what the problem is: is that these people think that they have the unique authority to dictate to everybody else how they need to behave. That's that's really what the problem is. Free speech and common sense. Yeah, exactly. Go to the about group page, and that's what they meant with the language. The visit group page. Visit group page? Sure. Uh, I'm not seeing if I can find that. Oh, are you saying that there are some people that are that are in the group conversation for this game? Um, browse, maybe? Uh, yeah, in the about? Sure. Okay, visit. Oh, I see it. Okay, let's take a look at it right now. The pinned comment? A few words. Okay. Oh, wow. This was 11 minutes ago, and it just happened. Oh, shit. Okay, so then I guess this is the guy that runs the account. Literally just put out a statement. 11 minutes ago, he says, guys, I appreciate all the messages and friends and I've been receiving. I'm going to accept you all in due time. It's just that right now I can't. There's so much stuff happening at the same time here and on X. I simply cannot answer you all. I'm sorry for that. Keep in mind that this group and curator has the goal of letting people know about the games that Sweet, Sweet Baby Incorporated work on. We are not in any means a group that is trying to kill Sweet Baby Incorporated. Well, even if you are, that's your right to do that because it should be your right to discuss. Like, I mean, you're saying that like people can't dislike a game company, people can't dislike a consultancy firm. What an insane thing to say. So yeah, I mean, even if that's what they were trying to do, I would think that there was nothing wrong with it. It's cool and wise to keep the words of the sake of the group curator. Longevity, well, thanks for all the support. Yeah, everybody's being positive about this. So. Nothing about this has any discriminatory language in any capacity that any reasonable person would perceive. The reason why these people think that there's discriminatory language is because people disagree with them. Yeah, how, how, how to be a racist, how to be a discriminator, disagree with them. It's pretty simple. And so, yeah, of course this is happening. It's discriminating to robots. She's talking about one or two racist people and suddenly it's the whole group. I hate whenever people generalize. There's guaranteed racist people. Guaranteed, absolutely. There's 20,000 people. I think if you take a sample size of 20,000 of any group of people, you're going to have racists. That's crazy. How could you ever expect anything other, other than that? Yeah, it's common sense. So, yeah. 90% of the comments is people saying they reported them for harassment. Uh, no, I mean, I don't really think that's the case. I think that if you actually go and you look, I saw some of these posts here. And uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, where is it here? They're making like, a, yeah, they're acting like making a list of games is the equivalent of Nazi era pink triangle. Uh, that's, I think that was a, a, the, the star that uh, dudes would have to wear back then. And uh, yeah, some sort of Steam curator page basically indicates that Sweet Baby Incorporated, the company behind most wolf cancer and video games was involved. A writer and designer working at Sweet Baby is asking people to report the group and censor them. And so, yep, there it is, guys. They're trying to shut down people talking. Now, here's my perspective about this kind of stuff. I think that the, in general, whenever you don't want people talking about what you're doing, that means that at some point, at some level inside of your own mind, you know that you're wrong. You know that you're doing something wrong, because if you didn't know that you were wrong, you would be preaching it from the mountaintops and you would be saying, yes, in spite of everything, and everybody who's disagreeing with me, I am right, and this is what I am doing is just, and that's it. These people are not even willing to stand behind their own words. That's really what it comes down to. So, like, that's really the issue, is they're not even really willing to defend their behavior. They're not willing to uh, justify it to the public. And why does the public matter? Well, the public matters because this is a, this, these are games that you're selling to the public. So, if you're making a, uh, if you're making a game, and, or you're designing or consulting on a game, and people don't like that, then it, you are absolutely beholden to the public. And if what you're doing is disagreeable, then you're wrong. And you don't have the authority to tell a free market that the free market is wrong whenever they reject your agenda. That's not the way the world works. And the reality is that even if the Steam group gets banned, the damage is already done. Because you're going to see other people that are making, like, from now on, any game that's, that's associated with this company or any other companies that are similar to this, whenever people learn their names, um, will be automatic. Like, all of the reviews will be talking about it. That's it. A sponsor? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tekton. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, gamers stand against this bullshit. I think that gamers don't stand against this bullshit. I think normal functioning adults do. Uh, I think that's the reality is that I think normal functioning adults do not want to be dictated to by a group of, of weirdos that are that are trying to tell them like what's okay and what's not okay. Like just in a very simple way, right? It's like, you know, I said this before, I got a little bit flack for this. That like I don't want a religious person telling me like what what like if your religion tells tells you not to do something, then don't do it. But don't tell me not to do it. Like I don't want to hear about your opinion and like your religion. Like you're everybody's entitled to their own thoughts, their own feelings, and their own opinions. But the moment that those opinions and thoughts come out of your mouth and you start talking about them, then everybody else is also entitled to their opinions and their thoughts. And I think that if you expect other people to get behind what you're saying, you need to have a burden of proof. You need to have actual accountability for what you're saying. Not, oh, well, I just have this opinion. Yeah, well, you can have any. That's a little bit backwards. Um, it's not about having a burden of proof. If I am part of religion, Islam, that says you're not allowed to eat pork and women must cover their hair unless they are related to immediate family. I cannot walk into someone else's home who is agnostic or otherwise and tell them that their women need to follow the rules of my religion. Because then they can say to me, well, my religion says that you need to do this, 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 and this. So if somebody comes to my home and they say, excuse me, don't you know that your wife should be covering her hair? 
I could say, excuse me, sir, don't you know that the moment you cross your threshold, you need to give me your ass? Like, you need to give me $20, your ass, and your wife needs to give me her ass to get in my kitchen and clean my floors. They're dirty. Who religion said that? The religion of Carl. For Carlists here. Now turn around and bend over. And spell R-U-N. <laughs> uh, but that's really how that works. Any opinion that you want. But if you want anybody to take you seriously, there probably needs to be a little bit of logic behind it. So that's the issue. And these people are not willing to defend their perspectives. They're not willing to actually engage the public. They're not willing to win over the public in the, uh, you know, the, the free marketplace of ideas. And because of that, guess what? People are fucking tired of being having things dictated to them and being told what they can and can't see by some random idiots. It doesn't matter whether this is the, uh, you know, this is the religious moral panic of the 90s, the uh, pseudo, uh, you know, patriot nationalism uh, disguised as patriotism of the 2000s after September 11th, the, uh, you know, fake uh, feminism and fake wokeism that's been going on ever since probably the uh, mid 2010s. I think people just in general are tired of fakery. They're being tired of being told what to do. Uh, they're being tired of really. I think actually that's really it. They're being they're they're, they're tired of being told what to do. It's literally that simple, isn't it? People don't want to be told what to do. So yeah. This whole thing is happening. Um, I, I totally support this, by the way. I completely support it. There is no harassment that's going on here. This person is completely mischaracterizing what's happening intentionally. They are lying. They're also like promoting brigading, which I don't really care about brigading because brigading shouldn't matter if somebody isn't breaking the rules. However, um, sorry to say, guys, but uh, nobody's breaking the rules here. Cry me a fucking river. There's a lot of people that are upset about this, and I say good. Fuck them. That's my perspective on it. And now, the bad takes. <laughs> 